Hi guys, here's your video on 4.3 right triangle trigonometry. After you're done watching the video, you should be able to find the six trig ratios, use special right triangles to find exact values, as well as solve application problems. Hopefully, what you're about to see is a little bit of a review from geometry. Um, so what we're looking at today is right triangles. So I have my triangle, right triangle, and I can relate the sides of my triangle to an angle using uh, the six trig functions. So here's my angle over here. If I go to the opposite side of my angle, I'm going to label that my opposite. Adjacent means next to. So the side that's right next to my angle is the adjacent. And the hypotenuse is the longest side, but your hypotenuse is also opposite the right angle. So there's your hypotenuse. Once I have those three sides labeled, I can go ahead and find six trig functions. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent, those are just reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite. Secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Now for sine, cosine, and tangent, the best way to remember that is to remember SOHCAHDOA. Hopefully that phrase sounds familiar. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Just make sure you spell SOHCAHDOA correctly, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose. Okay, so I want to find the six trig ratios, which means I need to find um, all three sides first. I only know two of the sides, so I'm missing this uh, third side over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to find that third side. My hypotenuse is 11. One of my legs is 5. So I just need to find that second leg. So that's 121 equals 25 plus b squared. Let's see, 121 minus 25 is 96. So b is the square root of 96. Now, the square root of 96 technically can be reduced further. You can simplify that radical, um, but I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 96 because our goal is to find the value of six trig functions, um, not really simplify the radical, so we'll just leave it like it is. Okay, so to find the six trig functions, I'm going to label my three sides. So here's my angle. Straight across the triangle, that's your opposite side. Across from your right angle, that's your hypotenuse. And the side that's next to your angle is the adjacent. And now that I have everything labeled, I can go ahead and find the six trig functions. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 5 elevenths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the square root of 96 over 11. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 5 over the square root of 96. Now I can't have a radical in the denominator, so we have to change that. So that's 5 root 96 over 96. All right. So since I know sine, cosine, and tangent, I can find the other three. So sine matches up with cosecant, so that's 11 fifths. Cosine matches up with secant, so that's 11 over square root of 96, which we need to change. So that's 11 root 96 over 96. And then tangent matches up with cotangent, which I'm going to go ahead and flip this one over, because once I flip that over, I no longer have a radical in the denominator. All right, so those are the six trig functions of that triangle. The next thing I want to look at is finding the values of the trig six trig functions when I give you one of them. So cosine is 12 thirteenths. So I can go ahead and draw a triangle. There's my theta. 
Now cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. If you forget that, write Sokotoa at the top of your paper. So that means the adjacent side of my angle is 12 and my hypotenuse is 13. And I can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for that third side. So I have 13 squared minus 12 squared is 25, so that means B is 5. So this side is 5. Now I already gave you cosine, so that's nice. It's one less trig function to find. So if I know cosine, that means I also know secant, because they are reciprocals of each other. So let me just find the other four. So cosine is 12 thirteenths. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be 5 thirteenths. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's 5 twelfths. If it helps you label the sides, here's your angle. There's your opposite side. There's your hypotenuse. And there is your adjacent. Since I know that sine is 5 thirteenths, that means cosecant is 13 fifths. And cotangent is going to be 12 fifths. Okay, the next thing we're looking at are special right triangles. So special right triangles are 30, 60, 90 triangles and 45, 45, 90 triangles. Um, the special right triangles were used to create that unit circle, um, which is why with that unit circle you have the angle measurements of 30, 60, and multiples of 45. So you do have to remember how these special right triangles are set up. Um, opposite your 90 degrees is going to be 2a. Opposite your 60 degrees is the square root of 3 times a. Another way we can write that is a root 3. So I don't want you to think that this a is underneath that radical when it's not. And opposite your 30 degrees is a. For a 45, 45, 90, opposite your 45 is a. Opposite your other 45 is also a, since it's the same angles. And then opposite your 90 degrees is the square root of 2 times a. But again, I'm going to write that as a root 2. So when you're solving for missing sides using a special right triangle, it's helpful to label what the sides should be. So opposite your 30 degrees is A. Opposite your 90 degrees is 2A. And since this is 30, that makes this side or this angle 60. And opposite your 60 degrees is A root 3. Now the side that I actually know is this, so the 10. So I can use that to solve for A. So that means 10 is equal to 2A, which means A is 5. Now that I know that A is 5, I can solve for the other two sides because X is equal to A, which means X is 5. Y is equal to a root 3 and a is 5 so that means y is equal to 5 root 3. And There's your answer for letter A. For letter B I'm going to go ahead and label my sides again. So opposite my 60 degrees is a root 3. This side is, or this angle is 30 Opposite my 30 degrees is A. Opposite my 90 degrees is 2A. So again, the side that I actually know is the one that I'm going to use to solve for A. So I have 3 equals A root 3. I need to solve for A, so I'm going to divide both sides by root 3. So that means a is 3 root 3 over 3, because you can't have a radical in the denominator. 3's cancel, so a is root 3. Now if I look at my other two sides, 
x is equal to 2 times a. Well, since a is root 3, x is equal to 2 root 3. y is equal to a, so that means y is equal to root 3. All right, last but not least, my 45 degrees. So opposite 45 degrees is A. This is also 45 degrees. So makes that side A. And then opposite your 90 degrees in this special right triangle is A root 2. So this is the side I actually know. So I can set that up and use that to solve for A. So I have 4 equals A root 2. Divide both sides by root 2. I'm going to change this so I don't have a radical in the denominator. So that means a equals 4 root 2 over 2. And 4 over 2 reduces, so a is 2 root 2. Now if you'll notice, both x and y equal a. So that means x is 2 root 2. And y is also 2 root 2. All right, so work on memorizing those special right triangles, which side is opposite um, which angle. All right, the last thing we're looking at is a word problem. So an application. The peak of Mount Fuji in Japan is approximately 12,400 feet high. A trigonometry student several miles away notes that the angle of elevation from the ground is 30 degrees. Estimate the distance in miles from the student to the point on level ground directly beneath the peak. So let's go ahead and draw Mount Fuji. There's my super awesome mountain. Um, it's 12,400 feet high. So that's this distance. So that's 12,400. You've got this awesome trig student measuring the angle of elevation. Here's your right triangle. Angle of elevation from the ground is 30 degrees. And what we're trying to find is we are trying to find the distance in miles um, from the student to the point on level ground directly beneath the peak. So that's this distance right here. Now what I have is I have my angle. From my angle, this side is my opposite. And from my angle, this side with the x is my adjacent. So when you're solving for word problems, you need to pick which trig function you're going to use, which um, is either sine, cosine, or tangent. So I'm going to go back to what I know about Sokotoa, writing it up at the top. And the two sides that I have in relation to that angle are the opposite and the adjacent. So the trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent. So I can set up a tangent ratio. So I have tangent of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side was 12,400 uh, and my adjacent side is x. I can go ahead and cross multiply. That gives me x tangent of 30 degrees equals 12,400. Divide both sides by tangent of 30. I'm going to plug that expression into my calculator. Double check the mode on your calculator to make sure it's in degree mode and not radians, since 30 degrees is in degrees. So I have 12,400 divided by tangent of 30, and that gives us 21,477.4 feet. But the question does ask for the distance in miles. Well, how many miles are, or how many feet are in a mile? It's 5,280. So I'm going to take this answer and divide it by 5,280. Which gives me about 4.1 miles. So this student is standing approximately 4.1 miles um, from a point on level ground directly beneath the peak. 
All right, so that concludes all of your notes for section 4.3, right triangle trig.